also of having a dog. <laughs> Hello everyone, good morning, how are we all doing? Welcome back to my channel and to a little daily vlog in London. How are we all doing? Thank you all so much for your lovely comments. I know I say this every time, but when I film videos, obviously that's not when I read your messages, it's when the videos go live. I was reading through some of the comments on the video where I wasn't very well, and oh, good morning. <laughs> Here she comes, she is me talking and she has to come in and say hello. Good morning everyone. <laughs> oh yeah, so I was reading through your comments. So I was reading through your comments about flat and our landlord and like the responsibility and we are just biting the bullet, we really are. Thank you so much for all of your support and your messages. I had so many DMs on Instagram as well from people who work in like the property sector as well. So I really do appreciate it. Um, that wasn't like a video of me complaining as such, it was just like, it's not great. But it's a sad reality of renting specifically in London as well when landlords have these amazing apartments in fantastic places but they just don't look after them so. Oh! New lampshade. I'll show you that in just a second. How good does that look? Oh, so happy with it. Gorgeous day in London. Blue skies. It's like a crisp, fresh, high <laughs> spring day. And we walked Maggie this morning. I went to the gym. I'm feeling so much more like alive and healthy. I don't know what it was. It was like a 48 hour thing. I'm still didn't feel great afterwards, but yeah, that's a protein shake. Would you like a protein shake? Add. Great. What fantastic viewing that they can see the back of your head. I mean, it's a beautiful head, but can you can you sit here, please? Ah, delicious. Zara's in the office this morning, but she's coming back at midday, so Maggie will be only home for like an hour or so, but I've got a really lovely day in town, and I'm heading to Penhaligon's in Covent Garden. It's at the Wellington Street store. Um, did you like a fragrance profiling? which would be super, super lovely. I spoke about Penhaligon's fragrance recently, the high growth bouquet, and I gave that to Zara. And um, so they got in touch and said, would you like to come in and select fragrance for yourself? And I said, of course, I, I would love to. I'd love to learn more about the fragrance brand and also just to take you guys along and have a look around the store because it's beautiful. It's like such a classic British brand with so much history. It's a shame you can't come. We could get you a fragrance. <laughs> um, I've got a little breakfast booked as well. At one of my favorite like breakfast places in London. So yeah, we're just gonna have a nice chill day. And I hope you're in the mood for that. We can maybe have a look around the shops, head to a little bookstore. It's gonna be lovely. You, you look so bored. Hi. <laughs> Are you all right? Maggie, really? So anyway, enough waffling. I'm gonna have my little smoothie and then hop on the train and enjoy a lovely day in town. So let's go. Oh, actually, let me show you the lampshade. So here we are. I am so pleased with that. I know I shared this in a previous vlog. And it arrived so quickly, like considering it's handmade. It's from an Etsy seller. I'll leave them linked down below because they come in a different range of sizes and colors. Completely handmade. It's actually a fabric lampshade. So they've folded each piece and it's just Stunning. I think it pops so well against the green. This green was uh, a core paint and uh, it's, I think I painted it last year, or maybe the year before. Love it. Like the contrast with the rich browns, the William Morris cushion, I think it ties together beautifully. So, so pleased with it. And um, yeah, just over the moon. I think it's just like that lovely mix between like a little bit modern, a little bit traditional. Love, 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 love. And the other Pookie lampshade is back on its original place here in the corner. And I think it just all ties in absolutely beautifully. So I'm inside egg slot. The music is quite loud, so I hope you can hear me. But I have ordered the Fairfax sandwich, which is one of my favorite things to get. It's like scrambled egg, avocado. I've also ordered the triple mash brown and um, a coffee. So breakfast has arrived. Oh my goodness, I am so glad I went for a run this morning because this is gonna fill me up. <laughs> so I've gone for the Fairfax sandwich with caramelized onions and avocado. And then these are the truffle hash browns. I just tried one. They are like the crispiest, most fluffy hash browns ever. And then I completely forgot what the um, woman behind the till said this was. It looks like a, like a coddled kind of like compote with lovely blueberries. And I've just gone for a little coffee with milk. This all looks amazing. Excellent style. I have completely trashed my sandwich and I have to eat it with a fork. <laughs> it's so good. The caramelized onions and the egg. Oh, it is like the sandwich of cakes. 
Instant Coffee. I've just tried this. This is the um, blueberry egg custard compote, kind of like a cheesecake. Oh my god. It's got like a nice sour blueberry topping. Creamy egg custard with bits of digestive biscuit in it, like a crumble. Guys, it's so good. It's like, I mean, a pudding for breakfast. After you've had breakfast, I'm so here for it. <laughs> I just finished up in Exla and I'm walking through Fitzrovia. This is one of my favorite camera shops in London. If you ever get a chance to visit, it's a fantastic place to get film developed. And there's a lovely little coffee shop next door, number 26, that is really good for coffee. So, um, yeah, good places to check out. It's on Rathbourne Place. It's really windy in London today, so I haven't been able to vlog much on foot because every time I get my camera out, it seems to be um, really blowing. Lovely plants there. So I thought it'd be really nice to head to one of my favorite bookshops in London, Don't Books. Not that we need any more books at all, but it's always nice to have a look in and see if there's any titles popping up. Um, so yeah, I thought we could have a little look. And there's some fab little charity shops in Marylebone as well, so I thought we'd have a little look around there too. So, sorry I went very dark. <laughs> so I'm just gonna walk uh, to Marylebone now and finish my coffee on route. I'm very full, so I will not be needing lunch and I'll be needing a very late dinner. This is a really lovely restaurant in London as well. I've been here a few times. This is Circololo, Circololo, Circolo Popolare, I think that's how you say it. <laughs> um, they've got a couple around London. And um, yeah, it's a really gorgeous restaurant. It's huge inside, so an Italian food. Uh, I went to their newly opened one in South Kent Kensington with my mum, I'm um, High Street Kensington, called Jacuzzi and it was fab, so definitely one to consider, but you have to book well in advance because it's very popular. Something that never makes me fail to stop and pause and take in is the architecture in London is absolutely incredible. Sometimes it's good to just stop and pause and look up, just take it all in because it's just beautiful. You know you have new meets old, I mean this looks like a historical church, God knows how long it's been here for, but incredible. lovely Italian restaurant. Can you tell what my favourite cuisine is? This is Lena Stores in London and it's a fab little deli. They've got some um, lovely little breakfast bits in there but predominantly their pastas are phenomenal and they're such a good price as well. All handmade, really really good in the heart of central London as well. Thoroughly recommend a visit here. This is their biggest one they have but they've got one in Soho and King's Cross as well. I cannot tell you how nice the weather, like it just instantly puts you in a good mood. It just makes you smile. Everyone's in a much better mood. It just stopped. Oh. I love it. And it's one thing I've always said, if London was just sunny for like, I don't know, 10 months of the year and then we had like winter and Christmas, it would just be fab. And this is Marylebone High Street. I've vlogged quite a few times on here. I've often come here with Ewan as well because we both enjoy it so much. Um, but it's just such a gorgeous high street, especially in the sun. I was watching Jo Good's um, YouTube video recently. She did a video with Shea Lux where she comes around some of her favourite shops in Marylebone High Street and I just love her video so much. Like her energy is fantastic and she's just so, she just has this like real thriving passion for London which I just think is fantastic. Oh, I just love it. I love her video so much and um, I think a couple of you guys watch her too so yeah. If you do, go and send us some love because she's fantastic. I'll leave her channel links down below. She knows a lot more about Marylebone than I do. <laughs> I'm just in Oxfam having a look at some of the books just to see if there are any that are popping it out to me and um, I usually <laughs> gravitate towards crime and thrillers or the Zara but there's none as of yet but um, yeah nice to have a little look and they're a lot cheaper than buying them new too. So I just got three books in that Oxfam and then um, there was two lovely women in front of me just having a little chat and I was like you guys go first like I'm in no rush so they just got all checked out um, and they were super friendly and uh, the woman behind the till took one pound off my total because she was like, you were so kind. And I thought that was so lovely, so I'm gonna pay that forward um, in an in in act of generosity. I'll grab someone a coffee or something. Um, but yeah, just little moments like that. I just love it, absolutely love it. Anyway, I'm gonna have a look in Daunt now, which is just next door. Here we are, I'm outside Daunt Books and I'm just about to have a look in. I've just spotted a book in the window all about dogs. It's called Dog Hearted, Essays and Our Fears and Familiar Companions. How wonderful does this look? I'm gonna have a look and have a little read of the back. I just picked up another three more books in Daunt. So six books today. <laughs> I'm nearly, nearly finished Black Cake, so I'm so excited. I got one Bazaar in there, so I'm gonna give her that on my back. Uh, but yeah, 
slightly more expensive because you're buying the titles that you want opposed to finding them in the charity shop but I'm really really excited so yeah I have a full bag full of books so now I'm going to head towards Covent Garden I've got about 45 minutes I'm going to walk there I think it's a good opportunity to stretch the legs get a coffee on the way this is a really lovely coffee shop I came here years ago when it was a different name but I've heard fantastic things about Watch House I've never had the coffee but some people who I follow online say it's absolutely delicious so I'm not going to try it today but if you ever are in the area um, in Covent Garden it's literally just off of Leicester Square just down there um, really lovely coffee shop and there's downstairs seating as well Anyway, onwards. And here's a bit of a throwback. This restaurant here was the first place I ever worked at in London. This is Bill's in St. Martin's Courtyard. And um, yeah, that was the first ever restaurant that I moved down here and worked and they transferred me over, which was surreal from Durham to London. And I ended up quitting that job because I hated it so much and ended up getting a job in this restaurant here. Well, it wasn't a restaurant, it was a coffee shop at the time. And the guys used to come in for food on an evening and I was talking to them like, do you guys have any jobs? And they did, so I worked at the coffee shop here, but it's now an Asian bar and kitchen. I have nothing against Bill's, I love it as a restaurant. <laughs> it's just, um, I didn't really enjoy. I think it was just a massive culture shock for me. I didn't really enjoy London at all when I first moved here. Yeah, I just didn't fit in with the team at all. I felt like a bit of an outcast, which wasn't the nicest welcome to London. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, always mad to walk past there and just take it all in. Oh, this is a lovely coffee shop here too. Let me show you this one. This is also a super lovely coffee shop called Fair Shot. Um, I've seen about this online and it's just off of St. Martin's Courtyard, just along here. We're now in, heading into the heart of Covent Garden now, just walking through the side streets to avoid the crowds. <laughs> and I'm heading towards Wellington Street, which is where they have the Lion King Theatre. But it's really nice to come down the back roads of Covent Garden because there's loads to be seen. This bakery just on the right is called Chestnut Bakery and it's absolutely delicious. A really good one to visit. They do some fab croissants in there. I don't know, I'm giving you a historical walk and tour of London. <laughs> but then through here is where we actually had our graduation lunch. So this is a really, really lovely restaurant. Got some gorgeous outside alfresco seating. And yeah, this is where we had lunch when Zara and I graduated. So this is, it's Petersham Nurseries, but um, obviously this is the one in Richmond. And then there is the restaurant here. It's absolutely stunning. Although in true London style, it rained on our graduation day, so we couldn't sit outside. And then we had to run to the graduation hall where we graduated. So all filming games. There's a lovely deli here as well. This is a Petersham deli fab. And now we're in the heart of Covent Garden. Heading into the piazza. Now the sun's out. God. London weather, eh? London weather. So I've arrived at Penhaligans and I'm about to go in for my fragrance profile and I'm very excited. They actually spray Helfetti outside of the store, which just makes it smell gorgeous. So I'm gonna head on in now. This is the Wellington Street, which is their flagship store. And all of their bottles, you will have the Wellington Street address. So let's head on in. Is it lovely? So I'm currently in the Penhaligan store. This is like the flagship, isn't it? It's like the original, this is the Wellington Street store. And I'm having a profile. And so this is correct, yeah? Just oh, trying yeah. to find something that's been like new and interesting for me. And I've already got so many, so yeah, just taking it all in and all of the scents. But this is something that's open to the public as well. So you guys can come down and enjoy and just find a nice Penhaligan fragrance for you. So I need to decide now because it's a lot. I think I've got some. This is six. <laughs> so we try to narrow it down. Love, already love, but then I feel like. That not so much. Not so much. No. Okay, we're, we're getting there. We're two out two yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That I remember sticking out. Yeah. Is that is that how oh, that. Yeah. I mean, look look at the wealth. And, um, look at the wealth of this. Like there are so many to choose from. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. So one of them, cardamom, patchouli, tobacco. Tobacco. So there you go. Yeah. Can we see that? Oh. And the other one was. Um, you can see the leather hoffa tea, so hoffa tea, but with more pronounced leather, plum notes, so rich, uh, more rich, more like dark yeah, 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 a bit of a plum note, there, so it's a fruit tea. Maybe that's a better variation than the one we had. I love that. I, I think I smelt that on the evening. Yeah, with Sam actually, who was like, yeah, there you go, yeah. There's the Sam. Well, like I okay, well, well, let's take this for. Okay, we can come through. And then we this is such a beautiful spot. I will show you guys around now. Oh my goodness. Look how much it is. Thank you. And I'm going to bring the bottle. <laughs> so these are my four selects that I've gone for, purely based just on my notes. I hadn't seen the bottles. It was just, you know, based on the notes that 
I really loved. Half Betty is kind of like, what's it you say? It's like the stand up version. Half Betty, the original is one of our best sellers, and yeah. Caesar okay. is more woody version of it. Right, this. okay, which again, I feel like I naturally gravitate towards. But then this was Quercus, this is what I actually just picked out as well. But then Lothair was something that I'd smelled last time I was in store and loved it. And then Mr. Sam, again, I actually came with my friend Sam and he loves this fragrance and I tried this at the weekend when I had dinner with him and it smelled amazing. So there we are, these are my four selects. So we've got to try and narrow them down. So we've just tried all of these on the skin. Naturally, when you try fragrances, they will dry differently depending on, you know, whether you're warm and that kind of thing. So obviously we've got Halfetti Cedar, which was lovely, but once I popped this on, I felt like it dried differently to how it naturally smelled. Lothair is something that I'm sticking out to and it's absolutely stunning. It's like a nice fresh scent, a little bit lighter, but then Mr. Sam, winner, absolutely wonderful. Like a lovely, I'm gonna guess more of like an evening fragrance to me, but all stunning. So I've just been smelling some of the candles that they have in store. So they have these eight in tall, and I've just got the smaller burners as well as the triple wick burners here. And they are absolutely stunning. They've got such a good throw on them. They're 200 grams and they burn for about 60 hours. So we've got some gorgeous fragrance. I've gone for this one here, which is... It's a juicy undernote, but it's like warm and rich as well. Absolutely beautiful. So that's the one that I'm going to choose, which is this one here. But like I say, they are all absolutely stunning. And the boxes are beautiful too. They've also got some traditional hard soaps as well. So we've got a blending bulk here, and we have a Quercus, which is one of the fragrances that I've gone for. It's a triple milled soap. So I've just been introduced to the fragrance refilling stations. This is a great way to reuse and recycle your old bottles. So if you have a fragrance bottle existing with Penhaligans, you can bring it into store, get it refilled. It gets 20% off your actual fragrance purchase, because obviously you aren't getting the bottle. And then you can just walk away, so they just pop your fragrance directly in. And then they also offer personalization as well. So there's a whole host of different bottles that you can get with different designs. You can obviously have them monogram with initials or you can do all kinds of little logos or little emblems which is gorgeous. And again, lovely little leather touches as well. It would be such a nice gifting option. They also do install engraving as well. So you can engrave your bottles with a nice little message. This one says you are my favorite. How stunning is that? So you can get it for like a birthday, anniversary, or just even something to yourself. This really is such a beautiful store. So if you do get the chance to visit, I would highly recommend it. You can just take your time. You can ask one of the staff members and they'll be more than happy to help as well. They can just build your whole profile based on what you like. You might be wanting to try something new and they're all super friendly as well. So you can just take your time, spray some fragrances, go for a little walk around Covent Garden or any of the stores, let them develop and see which really stands out to you because what I initially thought I was going to go for is completely different and I'm so excited. So yeah, really lovely. I will leave Penhagen's link down below as well as all of the different things that you can just really enjoy. New fan love for Penhaligans. I feel like their fragrances are absolutely stunning. So really happy with my choice. I went for Mr. Sam, so I'm so, so excited to wear that. Even stepping outside, I feel like it's developed into something quite gorgeous and just, mmm. It's walking through the Piazza of Common Garden now, about to head home. What a lovely day. Honestly, feel very, very lucky. I'm back from in town. These are my comfortable items. Oh, look, my battery's flashing. When I work from home, I have to just be in comfort because I'm usually in heels. That's uncomfortable for me to look at. <laughs> Let me change my battery and then I'll show you the books. So just showed Zara the books while I wait for my battery to charge. Look at all of these. I am so impressed. Three were from the charity shop and three were from Dawn Books. So I'll give you a very quick overview. First one, The Exhibitionist. I saw this in Bath in oh, Topping, Topping Bath. This is The Exhibitionist by Charlotte Mendelssohn. And um, it's about a family. So very similar to Black Cake, what I'm reading currently. A darkly funny portrait of a dysfunctional family, wise, waspish, and emotionally astute. It's an addictive read, says The Guardian. So really looking forward to reading that. The next one was also in Daunt Books. This is such a me and Zara book. It's called The Couple at the Table by Sophie Hannah. A dream honeymoon. You're madly in love, newly married, and at an exclusive resort, a nightmare dinner. You receive a note warning you, beware of the couple at the table nearest to yours. There are five couples. Any of them might have murder in mind. How good does that sound? Then the last one was Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. Now Gillian Flynn, one of the best authors, wrote Gone Girl, uh, a New York Times bestseller. It's a real winner. Fresh from a brief stay at a psych hospital, reporter Camille Parker 
the Preco, sorry, faces a troubling assignment. She must return to her tiny hometown to cover the murders of two preteen girls. So again, not a light read, but one that will definitely keep the pages turning. Then in Oxfam, I picked up this one, After the Crash by Michael Bussey. So it's about a plane crash. On the night of December 22nd, the plane crashes on the Franco-Swiss border. All passengers are killed instantly, apart from one miraculous survivor, a three-month-old baby girl. But who is she? Two families step forward to claim her. But who is Lysie Rose or Emily? But who is she? So essentially two families are trying to claim her and you need to find her identity. Again, very good. This was uh, three pounds. I got this from my mum. Um, I'm actually seeing it at the end of the month from my niece's christening, so I'm gonna give her this. It's by Graham Norton, the chat show host here in England. Um, it's called Holden. This is his first ever debut no novel. Few speak of what happened to Tommy Burke on the events that live up to the big house. But when the land betrays a secret held deep in the grounds, old rivalries, violent histories, and unspoken regrets loom into view. And this one innocent seaman place must face its hidden past. It sounds very good, I'm not gonna lie. Mom has also read one Graham Norton book and she actually passed it on for us to read. We haven't read it as of yet, but I thought this would be nice for her. This was uh, four pounds. And then lastly, we got this. So this is by one of our favorite authors, Lisa Jo, actually probably the author of one of the best books I've ever read, Family Upstairs. I absolutely loved it. So this is called The Family Remains. So this is like the sequel to The Family Upstairs. London, June 2019, early morning on the foreshore of the River Thames, a bag of bones is discovered, human bones. God, all of these books sound quite bleak. <laughs> Dear Samuel Owazu, quickly sends for the bag for a forensic examination. The bones are of those of two young women killed by a blow to the head many years ago. Described as fast paced and cleverly plotted. I'm very much looking forward to this. It's a large book in comparison, but um, yeah, this was four pounds as well. I picked up some fresh tulips for um, the living room. These are from the little florist seller outside Brixton Tube Station. Such a nice guy. These are the waitress ones. They are now slightly dead, but they've lasted two weeks, which is so good. So we're gonna give these a little swap over. Aren't they beautiful? I think they're such a gorgeous colour, nice and vibrant. And really introducing the spring colours into the living room. Please vote now if you prefer Zara, you watching are me over Luke. The Bonnie to my Clyde, the Ant to my deck, the you're the Will to my kit, and the Will to your kit. I don't know what I'm saying. Actually, you need to stay tuned because I've just bought a dress that looks like Kate Middleton's dress. <laughs> We've gone to a wedding and Zara's bought her wedding gown. Um, it's not till October, but it looks lovely. I'm, I, I am very excited. Anyway, um, we're making a start on dinner and we're making a one pan fajita pasta. It's absolutely delicious. Um, I filmed this on YouTube before, so I'm gonna actually film this and film it for a reel, but I will put it on a YouTube short as well. So the recipe will be there and the full recipe will be on my Instagram. So um, yeah, it's really simple. We just had some leftover peppers and that's it, pepper and onion and pasta. Dinner is served. I'm so pleased with how this turned out. It's like a one pan wonder. You do it all in one pan, cook the pasta, fry everything in one pan. Cheers. Mm. So tasty. Delicious. Maggie, can you please explain to me why all of the cushions are on the floor? Maggie. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> this is perfect. This works just for me. Good morning. So. I feel like this is just honestly, well, come, come on in. Maggie. Maggie has supersonic hearing to the point where you can take an apple out of the fruit bowl. You know, don't She can you? be in a whole different part of the flat. Like, it's not a massive flat, but it's a fairly big flat, isn't it? Like, mm. she can hear us. And better yet, when you do this, look at her. Luke, don't point a knife. No, <laughs> I'm not. She knows. It's like a regular thing now, and that much of a routine that she gets. Two little pieces of apple. Sit down, please. Maggie, where's your paw? Paw? Good girl. Thank you. One piece. And she takes it so gently, oh, it melts my heart. Maggie! <laughs> Time for your fruit salad. Next up, blueberry. Oh, oh, equally as delicious. So gentle. So I recently moved my desk around and um, Zara's now being my PA. <laughs> she is really it trying to- be much more successful in life if you just let me deal with the actual work side of things. Maggie, what do you think? Should we hire mom your mom? Mom is a boss. Should we hire your mom? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Again, 
it is Friday and I've got, well, not a busy day, but like got a couple of things on. Um, I'm off to pick up Ewan because he is very kindly helping me shoot some um, content for Instagram today. It's for a job with American Express who I partner with regularly, love working with American Express and um, yeah, it's a foodie one. So we're heading to Tootin Market, which is the market really close to where I live. So we're going to be shooting a cool restaurant there, which is very exciting. And then I've got some home bits to pick up in a retail park super close to the market. Um, more cushions. I know you'll think I'm mad, but trust the process. <laughs> um, yeah, it only dawned on me when I got that lovely Morrison Core cushion that we needed like another one behind it. And we've obviously had a bit of a rejig in the living room and it all is going to tie it together beautifully. So that's today's plan. But um, I'm really looking forward to seeing you and it's always lovely. And Zara's just found another thing on Facebook Marketplace that I think you guys are going to love. It's whether or not the woman replies, but yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a busy day. <laughs> We've arrived. Oh Hello. my goodness. Sorry. Ewan's here. Oh, yeah. That, feel, I feel like there's roadworks and just stuff everywhere in London at the minute yeah. and it's still the end of half term, so. It's busy. Chaotic. Chaotic. Like all of us. the above. <laughs> we need a coffee. I feel like my eye bags are just too. not great. Well, um, I think there's a Starbucks there. Yeah, I think I spied one. What's that? There's a Nero, but I think there is a Starbucks. We'll get a coffee. Yeah. Um, I'm going to pick up more cushions. I said this earlier. I know I said to you about cushions, and the last time we were filming together, I was buying a cushion. I'm replacing the ones on the sofa now because yeah. everything looks really nice and like, but the green ones are just not given life. Okay. They've been Maggie slobbered. Obviously, we've had them <laughs> since she's a puppy. They've yeah. been chewed on the corners. So yeah, these are cushion covers. So I'm not buying the Have actual. You bought them. Already? I've reserved them. them. Yeah. So I'm okay. collecting. I've done click and collect. Next under Elm, so we're going to go and probably won't even Exciting. be there. And uh, yeah, get a coffee, and then we're going to go have some lunch. See? Let's head on in. That was relatively smooth. Yeah, it smooth. was. Very but easy click and collect. Collection from Next. Nice little coffee. A lovely coffee you're in the oh, spot. Oh, it's starting to rain. I know, the weather is awful. It's, it's nice and cozy in the car. It is. I know. We, uh, we're going to do Next first. I mm. thought I'd show you them in the car, not the fly hall. Oh, yeah. And these are very, I feel like they're going to be a bit of you because um, Ewan's just recently swapped out his sofa and uh, sofa uh, cover, sorry, isn't it? Yes. Be Bems, right? Bems. Bems. They, they do Ikea sofa covers, yeah. Now this is a bit out there. Oh, I love and it. And I feel like you're either going to be like, are you mad or like, okay. I but like They're these. a bit bald, but these are the cushion covers I've got. So they've got a nice like gingham frill, like but then... Pattern clashing. Always, it is, isn't it, it like, is. Yeah, that's they're, cool. They're out there, but think with the green wall. It's good 10 quid. 10 pound each, yeah. Not bad, are they? Yeah. The next. Good. Yeah. Once, because the cushion stuffers I've got are really good quality, like the, the um, down, like the down oh, sort. Nice. They're going to be well filled. Are these a bit of a dupe of something? They look very kind of premium. To Probably. Me. Should we have a yeah. look? Let's it's see what the quality is like. Mm, it's not the, not the best, not the worst. I think it's no. just polyester. Yeah. Not cotton, I don't think. That design of like putting gingham on a pattern like that reminds me of something. Does it? Do we recognise that? I thought they were yeah. very Soho House. Oh yeah. I like yeah. them. I'll see what they're like at home. They might not work, because I might hate them. <laughs> right, I left my vlog camera in the car, like a donut, <laughs> but cushion number two. This is the last, I promise we're not going to go to a third place. I'm excited for um, the Oh, this is really boring one, but <laughs> like I say, it's to go behind and be a bit more substantial on the armchair. It's just like a nice natural one with Piping, I think you call it piping. Oh yeah, like a Ooh, rusty yeah, yellow. It's, nice. it's a little bit yeah. more poofy, but um, yeah, it's got like a nice like, like yellowy piping. mustard. Is it, it is a piping, isn't it? Yeah, is it? I don't know. It's this very was bright on camera. Yeah, this was ten pounds. Um, so not it's got bad. Almost like a little flick, fleck. Yeah, like like more of like an oatmeal y colour. Yeah, they had them in um like a rust as well, like a rusty orange but I thought with the sofa the sofa the armchair being a bit brownie. Yeah. So I think that with like the red in front of it. Yeah. Because nice. there's this colour in the actual cushion as well. So it must be. Hopefully it'll all tie together guys. Mm -hmm. If not it can get returned. Let's say it was ten pounds. I'm supposed to get an envelope as well. It's a good price. Yeah. Okay. So we've made it to Tootin Market. Well Tootin -tootin. we're just to Rooten Tootin. We're just on um, a road just parked up. And um, yeah, really cool market. I've heard a lot about it, so we're gonna head on in. It smells lovely. I can already smell loads of lovely Bring stuff. In the wind. Yeah, absolutely. Right, let's head on in. Right, here we go. We're gonna head on in. This is Tootin Market. It smells wonderful. It looks proper old school style market. There is so much going on. Loads of different cultures here as well, so we're gonna head on in. We're trying a burger restaurant today. <gasps> Look at these desserts. Wow. There's some fab little places in here. Unwind, it's a little wine store in Tootin. Oh my goodness. 
looking for, I think it's called Bat Burger. So, um, yeah, oh, Yard Market. Gosh, this is incredible. Go and get a tattoo from Tattoo Studio. <laughs> Brick would do some awesome coffee. Two pound coffee, wow. And a beer come back for 4 50 that's not bad, is it? So as lovely as it is to go to places in central London, obviously there's so much of London as well that is on like south of the river, north of the river, so this is such a nice place. It's called Boom Bar Burger, and they do a really good lunch sale, so it's £8.50 for a burger and fries, Monday to Friday, 12 to 5, which is such a nice touch. Um, and obviously like it's all home cooked, it's delicious. The tooth market is fab, it's like a real mix of just loads of different foods with different ethnicities as well, so it's real cool place to get like a good taste of London. Food has arrived. These look so, so good. I've gone for a portobello mushroom with halloumi. We've got a little bit of slaw and Ewan's gone for a cheese. I'm so jealous of That's that. A that is a cheeseburger and a half. Well done, mate. Great choice. Gonna dig on in. I've just spotted this little art stall. This is so wonderful. Pick up the ends. <laughs> I've just seen some lovely ones in here. All little parts of Southwest London. So I just picked up a new piece of artwork in a beautiful store. This is Love Art in um, Broadway Market. A lovely woman in there called Gemma. I've just got a gorgeous screen print from a local artist. I'm going to show you when I'm back. So, so nice. Definitely recommend a little visit in there. Some lovely pieces. Just got a little wander around the market now. It really is an eclectic mix of everything here. There's some like Aborigine and African traditional pieces here. A little bit... Um, Scary that one there, but some of it's beautiful. We actually have some of these in our living room at home. My mum loves them. So I'm back home now, and I thought I'd show you the print that I picked up from the lovely store. The one was super, super lovely. So I will, I think she might have a website, so I'll show you a um, link down below if it's there. So this is the print. I just looked on the back, and it's actually made on a risograph. So they use uh, three colours in total. So we've got reds, blues, and a lovely yellow. And then it's just loads of old like packets. We've got Lyle's Golden Syrup. Um, McDougall's flour, royal bacon powder, so I feel like the packaging of what it would have been like. I think it's from like, must be like the 60s or 70s. But um, yeah, this is the name of the woman who makes them. Her name is Louise Lockhart. And uh, yeah, printed on a 100% recycled card. The print peanut, the printed peanut.co.uk. So this was 18 pounds. So I mean, it's slightly more expensive than like a regular print you could get online. But the fact that it's handmade, I think that is gorgeous. So I'm gonna keep this in the plastic. For when we move, it would be lovely in a kitchen framed. I'm so happy with that. And then I've just popped the cushion in place. This is just looking so much more full now. And again, this is what I was in the car about the yellow pipe and tying in with like the colour here. So I thought it's not a perfect match, but it just fills the space out so much more with the lampshade. I think that looks fab. And then I just swapped out the cushions in my bedroom. I popped them in here and Zara wasn't 100% keen on them. So I suggested that we maybe take the ones out of my bedroom, put them in here. And um, actually, I think it works really well. The reds again tie in over here too. So it's all looking very lovely indeed. So I'm gonna pop the new next cushions on my uh, bed and see how it looks all together. And there we are. I actually think that looks really, really nice. The contrast of the red and like the gingham with the green. I love that. I know they're not gonna be to everyone's taste and I kind of anticipated them being in the living room, but I think it's a really, really nice touch and it ties in beautifully with the green. Very happy with that. Quick book update, I finished Black Cake and mixed thoughts, I'm not gonna lie, mixed thoughts on this one. It kind of, I felt like it lost its pace in the middle and then really sped up towards the end. It's a strange one because it gone from chapters that are a page long, half a page long, to a different character, you really get a sense of like, it, it feels a bit sporadic, I think that's what the author wanted, but me personally, I didn't really gel with the characters as much as I wanted to. Just about two siblings who sadly lose their mother, and they come together after an estranged eight years, and they find out about their mother's past. I didn't really resonate with any of the characters. I didn't really understand a lot of what was going on, and then kind of caught up as the book went on. So I didn't love it, but I think it got me apart, and I didn't really feel the suspense. I don't know. I'd probably give it like a three out of five. Um, it was it was really well written, to be fair, and um, I think it was a real nice way to learn more about um, Caribbean culture. 
Didn't love it, not gonna lie, didn't love it. I'm now moving on to the catch, which Zara really strongly recommended by T.M. Logan. I am super excited to get my teeth stuck into this one. It's about 400 pages, so it should be a nice and quick read and a, like a fast pace. So yeah, I'm gonna read this and I'll let you know how I get on in a future vlog. But I'm gonna wrap up this video. It's been super lovely. I hope you've enjoyed it. I really feel like the past couple of days have just gone so quick. I'm like, how's it the weekend already? So we're gonna have a super chill one, but I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much, as always. Lots of love to you all. Take care and I'll catch you all very soon in the future video. Bye for now.